Shut up and sit down. Hey everybody, Barry here again. Hey everybody, Barry here again. I kind of skipped ahead a little tiny bit, like nothing too serious, but the last two or three videos have been making headers. Welding and welding and welding and welding and welding. welding, welding. That's enough of that for now. So I didn't want to make one full video of me just welding. So I went ahead and welded it and then I was like, eh, I'll paint them black. Here is the can of stuff that I use. It's VHT flame proof, which I don't know if it's gonna be berry proof or not, but it says 2000 Fahrenheit. That's quite a lot of heat. Anyway, so I got them all completely welded up, painted. I think it looks cool. I mean, it's ugly and I suck at welding, but dude, it looks cool though. So I went over the whole headers, made 100% sure that they are airtight or at least there's no pinholes in them. And I'm really, really, really happy with how it came out. I'm not quite, not really quite sure what I'm gonna move on to yet, but I think, I think it's time for me to get that bed off the wall, move some of this cores and stuff that's there because <laughs> my truck is in the way and we can't reach our core shelf. But I think I'm gonna get that bed at least lay it into place, see if my wheelbase is gonna be correct or if I gotta move the rear end a little bit forward or back and make up the brackets for the back of the pan. And it'll start looking like a truck again. So obviously I need wheels for it because these are really, really narrow. They're uh, my buddy Josh's derby car wheels. That's why they look kind of spicy. And uh, they're, they're quite narrow in comparison to that tire. So I am gonna be ordering rims for it. There are some, I think they're like Pro Comp dirt track wheels or something. They're DOT approved, so I don't really care. I don't know if I'll have to move the centers, but according to my measurements with the fenders, inside to inside, and my rear end hub to hub, or flange to flange, I should have about three inches or two and a half inches of space between the rim and the fender. So that will give me a little bit of room for the tire bulge and that's untouched. If I've got to cut the center out, move the rim in or out for more space, I don't care. I've done it several times. I actually got a video on it, so I'm not concerned about that. I just gotta come up with the money to do it. So when I get paid from YouTube this month, I'm gonna buy another tire because there's the one that I bought last month. Thank you people who are watching for the tire. So I'll buy another one. And then uh, the month after that, or if I do some tuning or do a harness for somebody or whatever, I'll buy two rims. Potentially I'm looking at buying four rims, all for the back because I do a little bit of Mexico, a little bit of track stuff. Hopefully I'll get out in the summer, but a lot of Mexico. And I don't want to melt these tires off because they're new and they're nice and it's gonna be like 500 bucks into them before I'm done. So I usually get circle track slicks off of uh, Brad Melendi out to Thunder Valley Speedway. So I'll put those on another set of wheels. So I'll buy four wheels and just throw them in a pan throw a jack in there and a wheel wrench and then switch them out when I get to Mexico. Because driving to Mexico on slicks is sketchy and dangerous and illegal. I know, I said it. But uh, yeah. Yeah, let's uh, let's go bolt that turbo on really, really quick. Or the turbo is, I'm not used to saying that. And see how these headers look. All right, let's get onto the bed. Oh, cannot wait for this. Can't wait to see what it looks like as a complete truck again. It's been a long time. I got some cleaning to do first. Well, we had a couple minutes in between working here and Craig helped me pull the box over here. We got it laid up behind the truck and I've got the truck up on jack stands on all four corners. So it's level this way and it's level this way. It's right on zero degrees, according to my phone anyway. So I'm just gonna tip the pan down, lay it on the frame here, and then I'll bring the back up, up and up and up until it's level also because this door sill right here is level. So if I make the pan level also, then it all should be quite happy. So let's try it. I don't know how well this is gonna work. I measured between my brackets that I have welded to the bed already and the width of the frame and it's like exactly the same. So hopefully it's good, but we shall see. And I just gotta kind of move this over a little bit. Oh, 
boy. Working by yourself isn't always fun and games. Okay. It's something. That was really hard work. I hope this doesn't fall down. I just kind of kind of wedged. I should have been better prepared. I always say that. But it's there. It's in place. It looks it looks like it'll it looks like it'll work. Uh it's about half an inch or an inch higher than where it normally is. You can see here, and the step is up a little bit, which is not a huge deal, but we can also see that with that tab out of the way, right here, my panel also dropped. And you can really see it over there. So I gotta cut those tabs off, that's not a huge deal. I'll make up new ones. And, ow. That hurt. And also, we can see my wheelbase looks okay. So it's got quite the gap in the front there, but that's a really small tire, so it's hard to tell. But I did run into something. Uh, my drive shaft is about two inches too short. Inch and a half, two inches, something like that. So I think, I really think, and Craig, my boss, pointed this out to me. He's like, instead of making a longer drive shaft, why not move your rear end ahead a little bit? So that's a great idea. All I'd have to do for that is take my spring perch, not this here, but what's on the rear end, and drill the hole a couple inches back and then move the rear end ahead, put my U-bolts on. And I don't really see any reason why that wouldn't work. So maybe I'll try that. Uh, I gotta move my pan back a little tiny bit if I can to get it off the cab, because it is pretty tight to the cab. Although I don't mind that, as long as it's not touching. And that'll take up a little bit of gap and then move my rear end ahead to take up the space I need for the drive shaft. But it's in place and it looks good. I'm a fan of that. It's a little bit twisty, of course. It's being held up by a bar stool, so that's not ideal either but we're getting somewhere got a new bar stool this one works much better goes under the bed nice and secure and i promise i didn't do anything else but that and well i did jump on the front of the pan just kind of get it squat down a little bit to get those brackets to flatten out and it's actually dead level stuff just works out sometimes not really used to that, but apparently it does. <laughs> <laughs> so front to back, it's perfectly level at the same parallel as the pan and that window. And of course we have some disgusting wheel gap on top, but obviously there's no weight on the wheels. You can see daylight under that tire. 
So I just got to make up some mounting tabs for the front and bolt that down and then make up a bracket for the back over here. And I don't think that's going to be very hard to do either. I could probably kick it off that, that little bit so that it's level with the frame right here. Weld a tab on here, have it extend out over the frame and then bolt it directly to the frame. And then the same thing right up here, I could basically just weld a nut in the top of the frame here and put a bolt in and then we've got four corners all bolted on. This is gonna be so much easier than I expected. That is wicked. After making the headers and like making them, everything is easy now. <laughs> I'm sure this is gonna give me some sort of torture that I'm not ready for or that I forget that I need to do something or whatever, but this is, from here on out, this is pretty much self-aligning. I just need to put four bolts in it, hold it in place. And, uh, and then I can really start measuring up wheels and stuff. We can see that they sit in quite a bit. Let's see what we can get here. Yeah, that's like a lot. <laughs> they, they sit way in there. So, you know, I'm gonna need wider wheels, obviously. So I'm gonna have to tip the bed at least up because I can see one issue right here where the cab, this line on the back of the cab comes up and it pretty much meets the end of the bed here. If we look around this side, it's out like an inch. So it's got to come over at least half of this width right here. So I'm going to have to tip it up, cut off this bracket right here. So I'll take off the side bracket. That way I can move the bed this way or that way. And then I can weld my nut in. And I'll And my radiator is going in the back, so I can make up mounts to have that mounted. It'll be mounted like this again. I won't, you won't be able to see the flat this way, it'll be this way. And that's what's worked really well for me. It's been a long time since I had a perfectly flat floor. That's, that's, that's really exciting. I can put stuff in the back of it. Like nothing heavy, but a little bit of luggage if Cass and I want to go uh, to a couple towns over or something, or drive to St. John's or West Coast or something. Uh, could be really, really cool to be able to put a suitcase in the back. There's not a lot of room in this little single cab. There's not very much gonna fit right there. But yeah, this is gonna be super cool. Those brackets, I cut them off because this frame has been an inch wider or a half inch wider than these brackets were. And all I gotta do now is like weld a stud down here or uh, tap it and put a bolt in there, whatever. That's really easily done. I actually cut the brackets off so I was like, what a perfect bracket for me to use. To go right here, weld it on to the bed, the rail across here, like weld it around, and then have another hole threaded right here, put a bolt in it. That's it. The cool thing is, if this works out the way I hope, the four walls, or the two walls tailgate and headboard, are not going to be holding any weight at all. It'll all be the boards that are on the crossbars and the ribs, and that'll be pretty much separate from the bed. I think I'm gonna weld back in fender wells or I'll make something to go there. I cut those out for the big tires when it was dually, so that's long gone. But it's gonna look like something very soon. I have a plant, plant, plan. And this is it. Okay, so I have a bolt and a nut. I should have prepared better, hang on. Okay, and this is what I did last time. So I will drill a hole in the frame, about the size of the nut, which, <laughs> look at that, that's just been perfect. If it was longer, anyway. But I'll drill a hole in the frame just like that, lay the nut down in place so the shoulder is contacting the frame, and then, I will weld it the whole way around, put the pan down on over it, bolt it on. Done and forgot about it. And I'll do that on all four corners. 
So the nice thing is it's slotted like this, so that um, if I need a little tiny bit of adjustment, I can move the back to head or back a little bit. I can kind of wiggle it side to side and get it lined up perfectly. And I know I'm 95% sure somebody's gonna jump in here and say, you're doing that wrong, the bolt's not big enough. Well, it's a M10 bolt. These are engine mount bolts and they hold the engine in the truck. So I'm sure they're fine to hold the box on. <laughs> it's not gonna be supporting any weight, only the weight of the fenders and a little bit of wiring. Nothing, you know, nothing crazy. So this is gonna be more than enough for that. So this is how I had it secured on last time and it worked just fine. It worked perfect. Um, and you know, it's not an off-road rig. I'm not gonna be uh, down the Mojave hitting sand dune jumps or anything. I got them bolted in on the front. That looks really cool. I plasma cut a hole, welded a nut in there, and now I can just bolt the whole pan right down. And everything seems to be at the correct level and the correct height and all that stuff. I can shim it with a washer in under or something if I need to bring it up one way or the other. And now I can start at the back. So it's not gonna be quite what I expected because now the bed frame is about a half inch below the actual truck frame and it's got to go down a little bit more. Sort of relocate some stuff. I'll have to drop the bed down and then either make a Z bracket um, so it steps up to the truck frame or hang my brackets on the side and have them notched down over the frame, weld them out into the side and bolt it in that way. Either way I'm fine with, but I think it would hold better structurally if the bracket was on top when I get to the part where I can show you what that looks like instead of trying to explain it with my hands, <laughs> then we'll check it out. So instead of trying to get the back of the bed lower because my handy dandy thing here uh, works so well, my little seat, I took the jack, jacked up the rear end and just moved my jack stands one click higher. That way the back of the truck goes up the back of the bed stays at the same height and they're actually at the exact same level now. So let's come back and have a look. And it looks really good. It doesn't look like it's V'd or anything or up in the back, high in the front, low, whatever. It looks really good. Now I can find out how my tabs are gonna look and bolt them on. And I was talking to Matt Fivefield today and we were just kind of looking at it and I am gonna have to put ribs in across the floor because my wood is gonna be going this way like wood, wood, wood that way. And I've got nothing to bolt it down to. So I've got some, I've got some half by one and a half steel, like square tubing, but it's very shallow. So I can run those across, say right here where the stock mounting point is. And maybe right here, maybe I can weld a nut in wherever and bolt it down. And then I can run my wood along this way doesn't have to be big and heavy because I'm not carrying anything in the back of this, like I said before, just the fuel cell and the radiator and maybe some groceries, who knows.
Well, this is coming along really, really well. I got two nuts welded in to the frame and just see how this looks. There we go. It's not real pretty, but it's a threaded hole. Now I can take my two brackets, do this, bolt them on to the frame here and there, and then I can level the frame up this way, weld it all on. Well, brackets are done, <laughs> super cool. And hey, it looks like a truck again. It's still up on the jack. I'm gonna pull it off the jack stands now. Don't mind the fan, it's kinda loud. I got the brackets welded on. It always looks so much better in person until I look at it in his camera and I'm like, I'm a horrible welder, <laughs> but whatever. So uh, I'm gonna go pull it down off the jacks and see what it looks like on its feet. Make sure everything is nice and level. If it's not, if the pan got to go up a little bit on one side, I'll stack a couple washers under the bolts. They're extra long. And I do have to put big flat washers on there anyway because these only have little small ones. But let's hit this thing down on its feet, see what it looks like. Man, I shake a lot. Wow. There we go. Let's get these junkers out. I can't wait to see what it's going to look like with the new tires and rims on it. I cannot wait to see what it looks like with the new tires and rims on it. I, uh, I did a handful of tunes this week and um, I ordered two rims. They're not beautiful, but they're pro cop. I can call it like rock crushers. So they're absolutely not well drag lights. They're like steel rims, 10 inches wide, three and five eighths back space. So uh, I think that's going to give me like six and a half inches out or something like that. Which is a whole lot more out than these are. Hang on, let me turn this off. I didn't even realize that was on. Yes, get your chips. Okay, so uh, the front is down. Got a little bit of rake going on there. <laughs> it's a little higher than I'd like to be in the back. Yeah. Ooh. Stay. That's good. Come on, leaf spring. Why is it even there? I gotta use the camera to see it under because I can't get down far enough. <laughs> I'll be so happy to get these derby car tires off. Oh, now I can't reach these. Yeah. So I'm gonna have sort of a, like a drag pack set up, I hope. I think I'm gonna buy two more rims, maybe, and have these street tires put on the rims and have another of the exact same set of rims for the slicks. We'll talk about that in one second. I can't reach it. Ugh. So I don't want to be steady changing over slicks, tires, slicks, tires, slicks, tires on the same rims because it's just annoying having to go up my wife works at a garage and that's not a big deal, but having to do that every time I want to have fun, it's pretty annoying. So, so Matt Adams, the buddy in St. John's has uh, a set of circle track slicks for me. They're not exactly amazing for the street, but 
Uh, they're better than spending $450 Canadian each on ET Street R's or SS's. Cause I don't have that kind of money. So Circle Track Slicks it is. And uh, and so I'll put those on a set of rims so I can bring a little scissor jack with me, jack it up, change tires, um, enjoy my church service, and then put the street tires back on and go. Cause this is like $500 worth of tires over here that I just don't want to burn off. Hmm, this looks good. This looks good. All right, first impression. Uh, definitely gonna have to lower it. <laughs> right now, this is a 24 inch tall tire. That is like a 27 and a half, 28 inch tire. So it's gonna go up like two more inches in the back. And we can see that there's a lot of gap there already. But uh, I'm happy with how the bed looks on it. It's got the same angle as the door and it's actually just about at the same height too. And the pan was always lower or the fender on the back was always lower than the door line. It never matched up on factory trucks, but I'm happy with that. Now in saying that, when I get this mini thing under the back of the truck and it's out in the fender, I might like the way right the rake looks. I might, we'll see. Just as a quick glance, I don't know. I don't know. I still want it low. I like when it's like level. Dead level, zero degrees. So, it would have to come down a lot. And I just checked, and right up here is 33 inches at this belt line above the emblem. Back here, 35 inches. So the truck's gotta come down two inches in the back, on top of it already going up two inches when I put the big tire on. So I'm gonna need probably a four or five inch drop in the back in order to get my desired ride height. Big rake is fine, like it looks good on old street freak muscle cars and stuff, on like 70s Mustangs and Camaros and all that stuff. I just like it level. It's better weight transfer, it's, um, it's just a better ride all around. Steering isn't so dirty. So I want it level, but, but, but it's got a pan on it and it looks sick. I'm just excited that it looks like a truck again, even though it still looks like it's on the jacks in the back. <laughs> So if anybody knows for a four inch drop shackle or something in that area for a 2000 to 2006 Chev truck or 9907 or whatever it is, let me know if you found one on eBay for a really good price or if you've got one that you'd like to sell or donate or whatever, just give me a heads up, I'd appreciate it. I cannot wait to get this thing going. I got some more work to do on the pan. I'm obviously not done. I got some old bracketry cut off. I've got a lot more to mount, but I think next, Next, I'm gonna do some wiring. And this was to make me feel like I accomplished something this week because it's been headers, 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 headers. Unbolt the turbos, bolt them back on, unbolt, bolt, 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 bolt. And they're still in mock-up stage yet. But I think I can do wiring next because my headers are there, the turbos are there. And I know that I'm not gonna run a wire right across the top of the header now and have to rewire it and all that fun stuff. So here comes the boring part for you and the part that I really, really love. I love doing the harnesses, I love doing wiring. And the kind of cool thing is, if I can get the wiring done for the engine, then I might be able to do a fire up sometime soon. It's not gonna be this week, it's not gonna be next week, but hopefully soon. I wanted to have the truck complete, done, ready to go before I fired the engine, but I'm feeling the pressure. I wanna get this thing moving. So. Thanks again for checking out the channel. Thanks to all the new subscribers. And if you, and thanks to the patrons and YouTube members. If you wanna check out the Patreon, it's patreon.com slash station road rat rods. And the YouTube members link is down in the description or right here somewhere, I think. Anyway, and thanks for watching. Have a great day, everybody.